So someone gave a good proposal for what this reaction, this rate expression would be for the reverse reaction, with one exception. Um, we can't just say k. We need to have some su kind of subscript on the k. What would be a good subscript for this k for the reverse reaction from step one? R minus one. R prime. Yeah, maybe you remember that from class. Very good. This is from step one, so you might say k one. But then I would get that confused with the forward rate constant. So you might have seen this trick used in class. The convention is to call this k sub negative one. This isn't like a negative number. It just means that this is the reaction one in reverse. It's just a convention. This is not an exponent, just a label. This, so this just means the rate constant for the forward reaction for step one. And this just means the rate constant for the reverse reaction from step one. Because they're two different reactions. They don't have to, there's no reason why they should have the same rate constants. That's one way that people get messed up on the problems. You've got to be very careful to put subscripts in all your different k's, both for the forward and for the reverse. Uh, and if I'm going to do that, I might as well say that this is rate negative one, the rate expression. So you, on your piece of paper, you're going to have lots of different rate expressions. And if you don't label them carefully, you're going to get confused about when you're going to use each one. It would have been better maybe if I wrote this next to reaction one, but I'm running out of room, so I'd label it down here. Okay, so here's our rate expression up here, and here's our rate expression down here. Remember, we're trying to get an equation that involves NO3. So here's something that involves NO3. Um, now, we still haven't quite gotten the equation. Because we don't, want to have, we don't want to have something that still has these little rates in it. Um, well, remember that we're assuming that this is an equilibrium. So what is going to be the relationship between the forward rate and the reverse rate? Equal. Equal. I briefly mentioned that at the beginning. You guys haven't studied equilibrium yet. You're going to get that on Friday. But we said equilibrium is when the forward rate equals the reverse rate. So what new equation does that let me write down? That's right. So what exactly should I write down? So K1. And then NO times O2 equals K minus 1. And then NO3. Perfect. That's that new equation that we were trying to get. So that's exactly right. How did I get this? Well, this is the expression for the forward rate for a reaction. <coughs> this is the expression for the reverse rate. And since we're assuming they're in equilibrium, these should be equal. Why, why was it so helpful to assume equilibrium? Because in equilibrium, things are equal, which helps us to get an equation. All right. So we took the forward rate and set it equal to the reverse rate. And that gives us the equation that we need. Does everyone see where we got this? Um, Did I write this down right? Or is there a question? Uh, that came from here. Okay. So what we're saying is the rate of the forward reaction from step one. Does this equation make sense? Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. yeah, but what is the forward rate from step one? It's this. These two things are the same. And what is the reverse rate expression? Well, it's exactly this. K sub negative one times the concentration of NO3. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Does that make sense? I just wrote yeah. it. Okay, good. So this is a very important step, so make sure that's clear. Okay, maybe logically I should have written down this first, and then written down this. But this is what we're going to use to solve the problem. All right, now what? You can cancel k's because they're the same rate. That's a good proposal. Are they the same or are they not? They're not. They're not, which is why we need the different subscripts on them. Remember that we want to use the same symbol for things that are the same and different symbols for things that are different. If they were the same, we wouldn't have to use different subscripts for them. This is the rate constant for the forward reaction. And this is the rate constant for the reverse reaction. There's just no reason why those would be the same. Um, it would be a miraculous coincidence if they were the same. Maybe I wasn't understanding what you were, you were asking. Were you thinking about canceling these two? Yeah, but yeah. I realized that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to figure out what NO3 is. So we can substitute. Yes. Divide by. That's right. We need to solve this for NO3. That's right. We're using the substitution method from high school. So we solve this for K negative 1. So that gives us an equation. That looks like this. Here's our equation, if I didn't make a mistake. 
Now, if these were the same, we would now cancel them, but they're not the same, so I'm not canceling the Ks. Again, this is why it's so important to have different subscripts for each of these. That's very good. What do we do now? Substitute it into the second rate. Substitute into this. Remember, all along, we were trying to get rid of this term because yeah. we need to get rid of the intermediate. Rate expression shouldn't have the intermediates. That's why I solved this for NO3 and not for O2 and NO. Udizi did not know what to do next. Why didn't I solve for these? Because these weren't the intermediates that I'm trying to get rid of. I'm trying to get rid of this intermediate, so I solve for the intermediate and then plug into here. I like to use arrows when I'm using the substitution method to show how I'm substituting one equation into another. So there's our substitution. Got to be careful here with our algebra. So here's what I'm getting. Yeah, that's a good point. That, that's a good source of devious test questions. That's right. Um, we're in equilibrium, so we're assuming, oh, I erased it, but we're assuming that the forward rate from step one equals the reverse rate from step one. But that's an excellent point. That does not mean that the rate constants have to be the same, because those are not the only things that determine the rate. The rate also depends on the concentrations. And again, remember that equilibrium, what, when does equilibrium happen? When the concentrations are in the right place. Over time, the concentrations change until you get to equilibrium. So we didn't start in equilibrium, but this reaction is so fast that the concentrations quickly changed enough to get to equilibrium. It's the concentrations that put us in equilibrium. As the reaction proceeds, as the reaction proceeds, is this number going to change? Yeah. Yeah, until we get to equilibrium anyway. This will change, and this will change, but will this number change? That's why it's called the rate constant, right? So it's not like this can change to put us in equilibrium. This is just one thing from the start. These are the things that are changing to put us in equilibrium. So again, it would be a miracle if the reason we were in equilibrium is because the rate constants were equal. It's, the reason we're in equilibrium is because the concentrations changed to put us in equilibrium. <coughs> okay, so it, you can, I can see how you get confused. Um, rate and rate constant sound similar, but they're different things. The rate constant is only one of the things that determines the rate. If the rates are equal, that doesn't mean the rate constants have to be equal. In fact, that almost never would be the case. Um, there's no reason why two constants would ever be exactly the same. They're uh, for different reactions. Okay, so in equilibrium, is this a true equation? Mm -hmm. And in equilibrium, is this a true equation? In fact, this would almost never be true. Why would two random constants happen to be the same as each other? But in equilibrium, this is the true equation. Yeah. Okay. Someone pointed that out. So is this the equation that everyone's getting? Yeah. yeah. All right. So what have we decided? Um, have, uh, have we found a plausible mechanism now? Does this match up with the experimental data? Yeah, yeah I left out one step. Since there's two NOs here, I can say NO squared. These two NOs would be NO squared, which matches up with this. So I should have gone one more step and said, if this is the true mechanism, and if the first step is fast and the second step is slow, then this would be the experimental rate law. And that is the experimental rate law. So k can equal k2 times k1 over k negative 1. That's right. After all, this is just a constant. Well, you can write a constant as two different constants. For example, this just to make up a number, maybe this number is 12. Um, well. You can easily write 12 as, um, I don't know, you could write it as uh, 3 times 8 divided by 2. Any constant can be written as the product and the division of a bunch of other constants. So there's no reason why um, these ha would have to match up with this. Okay, but it's good that you brought that up because that could confuse people. What we basically said is the experimental data say that this experimental rate is proportional to NO2 squared and to O2 to the first power. And this tells us that the rate is proportional to NO2 squared and to this to a first power. Um, it's the same proportionality, so they're the same. We just written, we've just written the proportionality constants in different ways. You would never get this to be exactly the same as this because of all the algebra that we did here. Right. Again, you can see, though, how careful you have to be with the subscripts because you can have tons of little k's running around, and it's important not to confuse those with each other. Again, the one k we don't have is k negative 2. 
because this is the slow step, so it doesn't get to the reverse reaction. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, it looks like this is a uh, plausible mechanism. It is matching up. So we've kind of finished our work. Uh, and, we've, and we've finished uh, maybe one of the hardest things you guys learned how to do, which is what to do when the slow. We saw that it's pretty easy to deal with the case where the, where the first step is the slow step. If the first step is the slow step, then its rate, rate law would be the same as the overall rate law. So here's where you get better test questions, when the second step is the slow step. That involves quite a bit of algebra and assumptions and thinking. So that's the thing that we want to practice. 